Random fact, everyone in Las Vegas is obsessed with sparkling water and I was like, I don't know, I was never the biggest fan of it before moving here, but I have adopted the local obsession, which is sparkling water. I don't, I don't even know why. Everyone's really healthy here and like they do a lot of exercise and running and like they're buff and fit. So I feel like this is how I, this is how I fit in. Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. This will be posted at some point on Thursday, October 19th, which means I will be choosing winners for that day. There will be more than one. There will be a second video this week. I know everyone's going to be so excited. They've missed me being on for two weeks. So there will be a second video. It will post on Friday, and that will more than likely be a Ghost Adventures review. Everyone is like dying for me to get caught up on Ghost Adventures reviews. So I will try to get caught up over the next week or so. I know there's been a lot of questions floating about because we have noticed a slight editing change in Ghost Adventures. So Friday there will be another giveaway, so make sure you stay tuned for that. In the meantime, let's talk about something a little shorter, a little bit funnier, a little bit more lighthearted which is a new series that is on Sunday nights on Fox and it is called Ghosted. Word of warning, Ghosted is a scripted series, but I am so impressed with whatever producer they have on that series working with them to give them like actual paranormal knowledge. It is 100% paranormal, um, you know, biased based and they have gotten a lot of like key components that investigators would notice if it was just like a writer versus someone that's a part of the series and the script writing that actually has ghost hunting experience. So I am just so overly impressed with the way that the script has been written. So it starts out with two characters. One is named Max. And Max is a ex-physicist that was fired from his job at a university basically for giving allegations that aliens and UFOs abducted his wife. So he lost his job and with his physicist degree has nothing to do with himself. So he goes to get a job at somewhere like Barnes & Noble. Leroy is an ex-cop. He was fired on the job because he made a mistake and his partner lost his life due to this mistake. So the only job that Leroy can get now is basically a glorified mall cop. Since this is scripted, it actually goes very fast. It moves very fast. So the very like first few scenes, Max, who was the physicist, is in the bookstore and someone like shoots him in the neck with a needle and knocks him out and basically kidnaps him. And then Leroy is at work at this mall and he goes into like a security box. Um, it looks like to maybe view like security footage and he is like shot once again in the neck and knocked out and they're both kidnapped and abducted and they are taken to this underground, it's called a paranormal bureau and this is what starts their journey. Why are they chosen? Basically the case that they're working on, the paranormal case they're working on. They need an actual cop, which is Leroy has experience, and they need someone that has a physics or physicist background, which is Max. So the trade-off is, if you work for us and help us on this case for, I believe it was 72 hours, 
We will get Max his job back at the university as a physicist, and you don't have to work at Barnes & Noble anymore, and we will get Leroy his job back with another police department, and we can wipe your records clean. So it's almost a Men in Black kind of thing. Not really, because like the Men in Black movies were more alien related, I think, versus paranormal related. So I like the twist that they've brought on this, that it's, it's mainly about ghosts. So long story short, the case that they are on is this guy was abducted and he was taken by this energy. This energy has possessed another man and this guy is kind of a big guy. He looks like he's maybe 6'4", 300 pounds. So they kind of have to ward off this large demon that's inhabiting this like body so that they can save and rescue this guy. I was so interested in it that it left me like really wanting more. Like I was like, that was it, you know, which is really good. That's the purpose of episodic television and kind of a cliffhanger so that you come and watch the next episode. The end does not end happy, which is crazy. It's so hilarious though, you guys, like as paranormal investigators. So Max is much smaller than Leroy. So Leroy gives Max a boost to look into this like guarded gated room. It almost looks like a jail cell. And they are going to look in to see what this um, possessed demon being is doing to um, this abducted guy that they're trying to save. And the possessed demon being kind of takes his head off and sets it on the side of the table, which is really hilarious. And like Max is a physicist and he's like freaking out. He's like, oh my God, he just took his head off. Like, and I feel like it would be a panic to us. Like if we actually saw that as investigators, I'm just really impressed with the paranormal knowledge that they brought into it. There have been three episodes so far. I've only seen two. So the second episode starts immediately. Once again, like this is fast. So apparently they did so great. They asked the Paranormal Bureau if they could stay working for them because they actually found their job very interesting. Leroy does his ex-partner who died a favor by going to his house and pick up his son. Leroy feels like since he got his partner killed, he has to take on the fatherly role of his partner or of, of his ex-partner. Leroy had officially asked for Halloween off to take his partner's son Halloween trick-or-treating and their chief calls and says, Max, Leroy, I'm having an emergency. I need you to go and try to basically get a handle of a situation which ends up being this like demonic cat, okay? So they have to take the kid with them, which they don't want to, but they don't have a choice. They ask the kid to sit in the car He's kind of this mischievous preteen. He's been begging to go to a party to see his friends. And um, Leroy's like, no, you're not going to a party. Like, you're too young. And I promised your mom I'd take you trick or treating. So, no, you're not going. So, in defiancy, the kid gets out behind their backs and he ends up being the one that finds the cat. The cat ends up biting him at some point and. It's more like a disease that's spreading. So it's almost like a demonic cat that spreads zombie disease. I know that sounds crazy, but it was hilarious. Once again, they had amazing paranormal knowledge behind the script, so I'm so impressed by it. The kid gets in the car not knowing he's been bit, not knowing that he is infected, and all of a sudden kind of starts like this foam at the mouth and like busts the door open to their car, like literally rips the car door off and like takes off running like a crazy savage person. To show that he's still slightly human, he remembers to go to the party that he was begging Leroy to go to. He ends up infecting the entire party of preteens. They have to call the bureau. The bureau sends this like paranormal zombie like milk truck that is full of all paranormal equipment and zombie equipment. It is so funny, you guys. And so Leroy and Max get all suited up and they go in. They basically have to tranquilize every single preteen in order to get them back to the bureau to give them some sort of an antidote so that their parents don't realize what happened. That is the gist of it. They do end up capturing the cat, they end up healing everyone that was involved, and then all goes normal except at the end, um, <laughs> Max ends up getting like this like weird sensation in his body and he's a physicist and he's in paranormal so he's just weirded out by everything 
And he looks at Leroy and he's like, I know that we're on our way back, you know, to the bureau, but I feel like I may have gotten bit. And so I need you to duct tape me to the seat. <laughs> So literally they pull over, Leroy duct tapes Max to the front seat of the passenger car so that if he gets bit, he doesn't become a zombie and bite Leroy. And as they're driving, when you're assuming to wait for Max to turn into this like zombie ridden creature, Leroy ends up getting actually bit by the kid that jumped on his back in the party. And now Leroy is not only infected and trying to bite Max, but Max can't defend himself because he's completely duct taped to the front seat. This other girl from the bureau ends up coming in to save him at the last minute, and then we kind of prepare with another cliffhanger for the next episode. I know that I love Unscripted just like you guys. You guys know I'm like the biggest paranormal fan like you'll ever meet, but sometimes it is really nice to have comedy relief, especially when we've had a lot of really not so good paranormal shows like our docu-series that we love. So I'm telling you guys, this is so funny. The paranormal knowledge is there. It's mocking us a little bit, but we can't deny that some of us have been in some funny circumstances when it comes to, you know, ghost hunting. Like there's some funny things we've been through as investigators. So I think you guys will appreciate it as much as I do. Have you guys seen Ghosted? What do you think about the series? Is it something that you like? Would you recommend it to our community? Make sure you give my video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Make sure you guys follow me on social media and I will catch you guys next time.